Hi, I'm Jay McClellan, and this video is part two of my project to build a travel size cribbage and backgammon board. In part one, I used my CNC router to route pockets in the wood of the board surface for doing inlay. And if you haven't seen that part, you might want to go take a look at that part first. In this part two, I'm going to be doing the actual inlay into those pockets using uh, epoxy mixed with colored mica powder. And this is the mica powder I bought. I liked this particular one for the simple reason that it comes in these little bottles instead of bags. So I think it'll be a little easier to handle. But this is a set of 24 different colors. So I got a bunch of different colors to use. Here's the epoxy I'll be using. So this is the slow hardener that has a bit more working time, which I prefer. They sell dispensing pumps for this epoxy that get the mix ratio right automatically, but they're not so good for making a small batch like this. So I'm gonna do it by weight. I taped off every other pocket, and because I have two of these boards, I need to fill 12 pockets with the first color. According to Fusion 360, 12 of these pockets have a volume of 30 cubic centimeters, and I need to multiply by the specific gravity of the epoxy, which is about 1.2, so I would need 36 grams to exactly fill the pockets, and I want a little bit extra, so I'm going to make a 42 gram batch. I looked up online for some guidelines as far as using mica powder and epoxy, and I found suggestions anywhere from about 2% to 5% by weight. And I'm going to start with 3%. And with a 42 gram batch of epoxy at 3%, that means I need 1.26 grams of mica powder. Not exact, but uh, close enough for these purposes. The instructions say to mix them in a ratio of five parts resin to one part hardener by either weight or volume. For my 42 gram batch, I need 35 grams of resin plus seven grams of hardener. It doesn't have to be exact. There's a range of allowable mix ratios for the epoxy. So if it's off by a little bit, it's not gonna be terrible. It'll, it'll set up fine. I decided to transfer to a larger mixing cup. Okay, time to fill the pockets. And I haven't done this before, so I'm just gonna do the best I can and we'll see how it goes. And I want to make sure that it gets mounded up just a bit so that it's above the level of the wood so that I can sand it flush. I can see there's some little bubbles on the surface of the epoxy, which I kind of expected. So I'm going to use a torch and just play the flame very quickly over the surface of the epoxy to help burst those bubbles. That'll, uh, that heats up the epoxy just enough on the surface to break the surface tension and allows those bubbles to release. Here's the finished result of my first epoxy inlay batch. The surface is pretty good, but there are some little pock marks from little bubbles that weren't eliminated uh, even when I flashed it with uh, a little bit of heat. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem in and of itself because when I sand this down, I should be sanding below that in most cases. I think in the next batch, when I do this on the cherry boards, I'm actually going to change the CNC program to route this in two passes. And so I'll just route the first batch of pockets, fill those in, and then put it back on the CNC and route the second batch. My first batch of epoxy, I, used, I made a total of 42 grams, but this time I'm going to make just a little more. So I'm going to go up to 45 grams. And to maintain the same ratio, I need 37.5 grams of resin, uh, 7.5 grams of hardener to bring it up to 45 gram total. So I have 1.35 grams of this turquoise mica powder weighed out, and now I'll add it to the epoxy and mix it in. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's ready to pour. I'm going to pour this just like I did last time. I can tell already that I got a fair amount of air in the mix, and I think that's kind of unavoidable with the powder because I think mixing in the mica powder just automatically carries some air with it as it gets pour it in. Okay, that looks pretty good. However, I do have bubbles on the surface, and so I'm going to need to apply some heat to help break those bubbles. Well, here's the result after the epoxy has cured overnight. And uh, honestly, it looks kind of a mess um, as a backgammon board, but uh, that's just because I haven't sanded it down yet. And uh, so I'll just take my random orbit sander, run it over and run through a couple of different grits. Probably start at a fairly medium fine grit of about 150 and then work my way down from there. 
Well, this came out pretty good, and I'll wipe on a little alcohol to show you what it'll look like with a clear finish applied. You can see that really makes the colors pop, and I think this test piece is good enough to use as an actual game board. But I'm going to reduce the amount of mica powder I use in the next pours to try to make the colors a little more translucent. I went back and routed the other four game boards, and I went into the CNC program and modified it so that it cut only, let's call them the odd-numbered pockets, so that I won't have to tape off the other pockets when pouring the first set of epoxy. So I'll go ahead and inlay these, and then I'll put it back on the CNC and cut the other pockets before inlaying those. I also improvised this vacuum chamber to help get the air out of the epoxy before I pour it. Uh, using the torch worked okay. Playing it over the surface of the epoxy, it did release a lot of bubbles, but there were still quite a few left, and sometimes I sanded through those and made little pocks. And so that connects to my vacuum pump, and I've got my mixing cup, and then I just have this uh, bowl. I just borrowed this from the kitchen. I'll weigh out the epoxy like I did before with 37 and a half grams of resin plus seven and a half grams of hardener. This time I weighed out just 0.45 grams of mica powder, and I actually split that in half. So all of this together would be 1% by weight mica, and I'm gonna start with just half a percent and stir that up and see how it looks. So even with only half a percent mica powder, one-sixth as much as before, it still seems actually reasonably opaque. I can't see my stir stick through it very well. So now that I've got it mixed up, I'm going to put it in my new vacuum chamber, and we'll see how this works. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'll set it aside to cure. I mixed up some purple epoxy using about 0.22 grams of the color they call violet. It's, uh, it's a pretty color, I like it, but it just strikes me as kind of dark. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of pearl white. Yeah, that definitely lightened it up a little bit, even that tiny amount, but I'm gonna go for a little more. I'm just kind of guessing at the amount so I won't be able to reproduce this color. I did weigh out 0.22 grams or half a percent of the purple and my best guess is about half that much of the pearl white. Now I'll degas it in my little vacuum chamber just like last time. I don't think it'll get all the bubbles out but it should help. After the epoxy cured overnight, I put it back on the CNC router and routed the remaining pockets. So now these boards are ready to inlay the final color. For the blue, I'm going to mix up some red epoxy, so I'm going to make this board blue and red. I'll mix up the epoxy the same way I did before, uh, using just half a percent of colorant for each one. And for the red, I'm going to mix up the epoxy with the pigment they call Blaze Red which uh, is actually going to be a bit of a darker color. Mm -hmm. 
with the purple, I'm going to mix up green epoxy to make a purple and green board as requested by my niece. For the green inlay, I'm going to mix up the same green mica powder that I used before, but this time it'll be only 0.5% by weight instead of 3%. After the epoxy had cured overnight, I sanded it down, and I started with my drum sander this time uh, to take down most of the epoxy down to the level of the wood, and then I finished it up with the random orbit sander like I did on the previous boards. One problem I ran into was that uh, in some places the epoxy stained the wood more deeply than I expected. Even after quite a lot of sanding, you can see there's still a red stain visible around this red point. And, uh, I didn't see that problem on the first test boards that I did, but it was much more noticeable, especially with the red color. It seems to be kind of problematic in that regard. So I can sand this out, but it's going to take a lot more sanding than I expected. And if I were to do it again, I would, uh, before pouring epoxy, I would coat this surface with a sealer such as shellac to make sure that the epoxy doesn't soak into the wood and, uh, and stain it like that. Using the vacuum chamber seemed to work pretty well to get bubbles out of the epoxy mix, but I did get a couple of bubbles right near these points, like this one, and I think the problem wasn't that it was in the mix, but that it just got trapped when I moved epoxy into the point like that. And so in those cases, I'm going to clean them out, and then I'll just fill them in with clear epoxy, and it should look fine. Here's one of the red and blue boards, wiped down with alcohol, so you can see about how the colors will look in the end. And... Uh, I love this red color, and I think the blue has some really nice texture to it. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Here's the green and purple board. Again, wiped down with alcohol, and uh, yeah, beautiful colors. I'm glad I lightened the purple a bit from its original color. I think that's going to look really nice. Well, that wraps up part two, and I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Uh, but I've got an idea to actually kick it up a notch and uh, add some extra detail to, uh, to the backgammon board. So stay tuned for that in part three. And I'm also going to be doing some inlay on the other side of the board for the cribbage board, inlaying some text and also some artistic graphics. Uh, so that should be pretty interesting. And uh, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.